So if you're wondering how Google signing functionality is being done in Flutter, you are at the right place. So with these five steps, you see how that has been done. You need to create an instance of the Firebase auth and also the Google signing, trigger the authentication flow, obtain the auth details from the request, create a new credentials with the auth details, and finally sign in the user with the credentials. So if you're interested and happy to see how that has been done, subscribe to the channel, like the video, and stay with me to the end to implement such functionality. So with that said, let's jump right in. So I have my project in here that's basically written the counter app. So I'll get rid of the comments in here and also the default code and start everything from scratch. I'll return home widget here, which I'll be creating it sooner. So within the live folder, I'll create a file and I'm going to name this file as home.dat. So within that file, I'll create a stateful widget and I'll name the widget as home and return a scaffold in here. So within the main dot that file, we need to import our home widget we just created and saving the changes. There we go. So as usual, within the scaffold, we can give it an abba widget. So within the abba widget, testing the title. So it, the title is going to intend testing the test widget. And I'm going to provide a test of Google signing, saving the changes. You can see it over there can add more property to it, like censoring the title to be true. You can see it over there. The scaffold also takes in the body as an argument, and I'm going to return a container in here. And I'm going to give a width to the container. It's going to be 100%. So in this situation, double dot infinity, that's the 100% of the screen. And so I'm going to give it a height of 40. It also takes in the decoration, which in turn also takes in the boss decoration. So within the border decoration, I'll specify the border to be border.all. So within the border.all, you can specify the color to be colors.gray. So let's wrap the container within a padding widget. So you can see it over there. There we go. So the container is in the chart. And I'm going to place a row widget in here, which in turn testing the children. And the first widget is going to be the test widget or the test of continuum with Google, as you can see over there. So, right beneath the test, is going to be an image that's the Google image. So, image.asset, then we specify the path of the image, which in this situation is found within the assets folder. And it's name as google.png so when we visit the passport.yml file we need to uncomment the assets and also give access to what our image so assets slash yeah and saving the changes so it will run pub get to the latest version there we go as you can see it over there so the bus decoration also testing the border radius and i'm going to give it a border radius dot circular and pass in the value which is going to be eight. You can see the rounded container there. So let's give some styling to the test as well. It is in the test style and we specify a font size to be here, font size of 17. There we go. So let's specify the main as this element to be center. There we go. And wrap the whole of the padding widget within the center widget so we can have our container on the center of the screen. There we go. Let's wrap the image within a padding widget and specify it to be symmetric and give it a horizontal of 8. As you can see, it's pretty lit. Give it a height of 40. There we go. So let's wrap the container within a widget, and that widget is going to be gesture detector with this in an untap argument. So here is where we are going to implement the functionality of Google sign in. So we need to install some few dependencies. So let's run this command, flutter pub add firebase call. We need to install the firebase call. So once that is done, we also need to install um, the Google sign in package. So flutter pub add Google sign in. And finally, we also need to install the flutter pub add then firebase out for our authentication. So once we have a successful installation in here, as usual, when we check the password.yml file, we 
can see our dependencies are installed so let's visit the firebase console and add the project so i'll name a project as google sign in tutorial and click on continue you can decide to disable the analytics so in here it will start creating your project So once that is down, you hit on the continue. There you go. So this is where I'll introduce you to the Flutterfire CLI tool. So it's a useful tool which provides commands to help ease the installation process of Flutterfire across all supported platforms. So it's a set of Flutter plugins that enable Flutter apps to use Firebase services. So basically it connects your Flutter app to Firebase. So you won't follow that manual configuration steps setting up on various platforms. It will take care of everything and connect your app with Firebase. So to get started with the installation, you should have Node.js installed on your machine to run npm install dash g Firebase tool that will install the Firebase tools globally with npm package. So after that, you need to activate the Flutter Fire CLI tool globally by running this command that pop global activate Flutter Fire. With that command, it will install the Flutter Fire CLI. With the usage, you need to run the command flutter fire configure on your terminal and get started with it. So let's get back to it. So on the terminal, just type flutter fire configure for our configuration if you have that set up. So in here, to start fetching our available projects on Firebase in here. So you can see our project in here. So I'll choose the one I just created. That's the signing tutorial with Google. And also enable it on all platforms. So it will do everything under the hood for you. There we go. You can see we have a successful. So it will create a file known as the Firebase options dot that that have that some default setup. So when you visit the Firebase console, you've seen we have three apps being added to our project. We've integrated that on the iOS, Android, and also on the web. So within the middle of that file, just refer to the code in here. So first of all, we need to ensure that our widget flutter binding has been initialized. And also, we need to initialize out our Firebase before running our main app. So that's basically it and it should be asynchronous as well so our app is not crashed so it means we have firebase configured successfully so let's click on the authentication and get started with authentication so we need to click on the get started so in today's tutorial we'll be teaching how to integrate that or not google sign in so we need to enable the google provider and also choose your email in here and click on save done there we go so within our home dot that here is where we implement the sign in functionality first of all let's go to our project settings and configure Add some fingerprint to our app before we can enable our Google sign in. So we need to get the SHA1 and also SHA256. So you can click there and see how that's being done. So if you are on Linux or Mac, you can copy the above code and paste within your terminal to get your SHA keys. If you're on Windows as well, you can just click on Windows and see how that's been done. So To enable Google sign in, you need to ensure that you've added a fingerprint within your Android settings. So I'll do that quick in here. So I'll open my terminal in here and clear the terminal and paste in the code. So the password is Android. Just type Android and click on enter. Hit enter. There you go. You can see our SHA key, SHA1 and so SHA256. So you need to copy that. 
then add that as a fingerprint within your project before you can enable Google sign in. So I'll copy that in here. So within I'll add fingerprints, I'll add that and save any changes. I'll do same for SHA256. So I need to copy that one as well. And also add that and save any changes. There we go. So once you have that set up, so we can clear our terminal. So now we need to add functionality to sign in a user. So I'll just create a function and that's going to be an asynchronous function. So I'll name that as sign in with Google. And first of all, we need to create an instance of the Firebase auth and also the Google sign in. Next, we need to trigger the authentication flow in here. And also, we need to obtain the auth details from the request from the user. So we need to obtain the auth details. And also, we need to try creating credentials, a new credential with the auth details. So once that we have the credentials, then we finally sign in the user with the credentials. So it's basically five steps we are coming to do here. So first of all, let's create an instance of the Firebase authentication and so the Google sign in. So Firebase auth, and I'm going to name this as auth and create an instance of that. We also need to create an instance of the Google sign in. So Google sign in, and I'm going to call this Google sign in as my object and also create an instance of that. So once that we have that, we need to trigger the authentication flow. So I'll create a Google sign in account in here. And I'm going to name this as Google user. Now I'll call upon my Google sign in, which has a sign in method on it. So once we have that, we need to obtain the all details from the request. Since it's an asynchronous flow, we need to await to get rid of the errors. We need to obtain the auth details from the request. So Google sign in authentication. And I'm going to name this at Google auth as my object and we need to await and call upon our Google user and assess the authentication. So you should check the null here. So let's try creating a new credentials. So with the new credential, auth credentials, and I'm going to name it as credentials and we call Google auth provider which has a credential method and it takes two arguments that the access token and also the ID token. And the access token is going to be Google Alt. Then we assess the access token. The same way we are going to do it with the ID token, Google Alt, then ID token. Then finally, we need to sign in the user with the credential. So create a user credentials in here and we need to await and call upon our Alt object which has a sign in with credentials that is in the credentials so we just pass the credentials so that's basically the functionality to implement the google sign in so once we have that set up all we need is to get the function within the on tab so whenever the content the button is clicked the function will get called so within the on tab i'll just call my function sign in with google so we need to navigate the user to a different page so i'll use navigation dot navigator.push that is in the contest and also the material page route it is in the builder and the builder intent also is in a function and you're going to navigate to a different page that's a profile page which is not yet created and i'll be creating it sooner in here so i'll head towards my left folder and it creates a file and name this as profile page dot that so in here i'll create a stateless widget and name it as profile page and i'm going to return a scaffold in here so I'll get rid of this import and saving the changes. So we need to return a body in here. And the body is going to basically return a center widget. So within that center, it is in a child. And the child is also going to take in another widget and that's a test. And I'm going to give it a test. The test is going to be just profile page. So this is, when you save the changes in here, we need to import the profile page within our home to get rid of the errors and saving the changes. 
so once we have that set up we need to change this to an asynchronous function and also if mounted then we navigate to the profile page saving the changes so once we have that set up let's give it a try so when i click on the button you can see we have a pop-up for me to choose my account so i'll choose my account in here and i'll be navigated to a different page so that's basically it how to implement the google signing you can add more functionality to it so i just wrap the center widget within the column and i'll get rid of the center widget so right beneath it this, i will be having a button that's the elevator button for logout functionality so the button basically takes in the on press whenever the button is pressed that's when you're going to add the functionality to log the user out and it's also testing the child the child is basically going to be a test widget and that test is going to give a test of logout so i'll just create a function up there that was basically send the user out it's going to be an asynchronous function and we need to create an instance of the google sign in and call our sign out method so we just call our function within the on press that's the logout so once we log the user out so let's give it a try it's not let's add some more style into it so let's enter the column and also give it set the main assets element to be center so we can actually see what's going on in here there we go so once we click on the logout it's indeed logout but we've not seen nothing so once we log the user out we should add the functionality to navigate back to the login page so let's change this to an asynchronous function as well and we need to wait and log the result then we pop off from the contest so we'll be navigated back to the login page so we're just saving the changes in here and give it a try as you can see let's continue with google and i'll choose my account in here we've been navigated to the profile page so when you click on the logout should pop up so when you check the firebase console and refresh the page you can see our user has been added in here there we go and also when you click on the logout functionality you can see we've pop off from the contest so when we click the button 